WWE are requesting a whiteout for money in the bank. Roman Reigns was called out by Solo Sokoa on SmackDown, and a former AEW star has commented on the Shane McMahon AEW rumors. Stay tuned for all the deets. So obviously it's money in the bank tonight. WWE likes to get it just crazy with the press conference stuff these days. They had a bit of a kickoff event last night for Money in the Bank with Michael Cole uh, making a bit of a strange request uh, of the audience when he asked everyone to wear white uh, and that the, the, the company were going to provide white towels yeah. uh, as the, the company wants a white out for the event. Yeah, so like it's going to try and I, I'm guessing the aim is to make it look as uniform as possible yeah. and it's sort of like visually cool. They want a cool spectacle. Yeah. Now, we were sort of, when we were on first reading of this and hearing about this, it is quite a confusing and bizarre request. Right? Yeah. But once you look into it a little bit more, NBA seems to do it. NHL yeah. does it specifically was it Winnipeg uh, so Winnipeg have like the Winnipeg whiteout but apparently it, it's just a standardized thing that happens more in North American sports than it happens really anywhere else uh, NBA tends to it, it seems provide like shirts in team yeah. colors uh, but for whatever reason uh, it's like a show of strength and a show of support teams will wear uh, sorry fans will wear all white and there'll be a completely like whited out crowd of yeah. wearing yeah, white yeah. shirts uh, so it, it's, it seems like they're going for that kind of vibe we are obviously in Canada it does seem like it's something that ties into hockey as well as the the, the rally towels, right? Yeah. So I think uh, it, it's just it's a means of making it look visually interesting. That's for sure. It's that, and as well, we were we were mentioning just before we mm. started recording in the fact that the recent crowds in the UK and oh, yeah, internationally, we're good. yeah, we're good. We're, we're, we're really, really good. raucous. We're, and- we're, we care. Yeah, we do. We're, we're like, we're really loud and passionate because we don't get it that often. Toronto does get wrestling fairly frequently. Oh, they get it like every week. So like having... They're going to be half asleep throughout exactly. the main event. Exactly. Yeah. They'll be quality. It's at God. midnight. Um, but they'll be, they'll be um, having a, having this sort of aspect of uh, a crowd all working together to yeah. make that visual aspect. It might make... It, they're maybe trying to manufacture that spectacle that the the pay-per-views, the premium live events, whatever you want to call them, have had recently. Mm. And we've not had one in the US since WrestleMania. So, yeah, and so- we've still not got one in the US with tonight being in Canada, but being in the North American territory, they're trying to recapture that. Maybe, yeah. That element I, of I, like... I, I- Craziness. I just, I think it's going to be interesting, provided, like, the, the problem is that most of the merchandise WWE sells is black. It's bl- it's, yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's a brand new shirt for some of the more cynical people who've jumped on this. There's a brand new shirt from Jey Uso that happens to be bright white. Bright white. Just buy that got, for $50. You've got the CM Punk 50, $50, one. $50, yeah, white $50. Just buy one on your way in. The one, uh, But they are giving out the towels, so obviously people are going to be whipping the towels around their heads and stuff. The one person that I'm concerned for tonight yes. in this is Mr. Green Shirt Smiley Face Man um, on the oh, front kick him out. Kick him because out. Kick him out. Is he going to have a white version? Is no, he going to try and get this Amazon Prime Just kick him out. to Toronto? Kick but I, I, I can't wait to see if he's got a white version. If he does, props to Fair him. Fair play, but yeah. if he doesn't, He's not allowed. He's not allowed. He's not allowed in. Kick him out. Uh, so yeah, well, I'm, I'm, humble, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to be like a, a really interesting vibe. Yeah. I've, I've never seen a wrestling show that's going to look like this, so it's it's going to be pretty interesting. If it works, yeah, I think they'll works. do it. I think they'll do yeah. it fairly frequently, and then you'll start getting that organic pickup where people will start trying. They'll maybe make shirts not all black, yeah. and they'll all start being a bit more uniform <laughs> in colours, and they'll try and replicate that in the crowds. Uh, so going back to last night's SmackDown, of course, emanating from Toronto ahead of tonight's Money mm-hmm. in the Bank. Uh, we had a bit of a massive, massive situation uh, and a very, very well shot promo. Yeah. Uh, so uh, after being appointed as Tribal Chief last week by the rest of the bloodline, uh, except for Paul Heyman, who, Sadly. who went just flying through a table, uh, on last night's SmackDown, Solo Sokoa was just sat in this shadowy dark room mm. uh, and he was like, look, I, I don't want to do this. I, I never wanted to be the Tribal Chief. But basically this is what the family needs because Roman Reigns just couldn't get it done. And then he assumes, officially assumes position as tribal chief uh, and says that he's going to get the belt back. And if Roman's got a problem with that, he can come take the belt off him. I mean, it's quite bold. Now, this yeah. is something that it, obviously it was on last night's SmackDown, but it's quite big. So we did really, really want to talk about yeah. it in, in, in here in the fact that Solo Sokoa has been someone who has been positioned as a secondary member of the bloodline throughout Roman Reigns' time. Yeah. And people have been kind of writing him off, especially the fact that he's, I don't want to use the word aura, but as the leader of the bloodline, he's maybe lacked a little bit of that. I think part of it as well is that we just got so used to the bloodline segments being literally 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Literally yeah. 40 minutes. This was which quite wasn't, snappy. You know, it wasn't bad. It, like, it's just with Solo, it's just been more direct. And it's like, oh yeah, I don't need to do that. I'm just going to kill you. Yeah, this was a quite a snappy like, yeah. one minute 
minute 34 promo in backstage segment, <laughs> uh, laying down that challenge. Uh, Roman Reigns, when he does come back, I'm mm. feeling it's going to be SummerSlam. We'll get a little moment after that because it looks like it's going to be Solo versus Cody at SummerSlam. Well, that is the rumor. He'll come back and it'll look like that's what we're going to do. Uh, but then Roman's going to come back and then Roman's just going to be like, you know what, Solo? Yeah. Our Solo's going to be, you know what, Roman? Just have it. You have the shot. Just you have it. it back and we'll do yeah. the Cody thing, but this time we'll make it work. We'll make it, you'll make it yeah. work. It is funny seeing, <laughs> I, I, I do wonder how the element of Solo when Roman comes back, how much he'll still be calling himself the tribal yeah. chief. Just on a brief aside, I remember it's similar to when I was at school, I had a yeah. mate who said the exact same nickname as his older brother. But when his brother was about, he was like, don't call me it. Please don't call me it. I think it'll be the same with Solo. He doesn't oh. want to be called the tribal chief around Big Dog Roman. I think, well, no, he's, he's directly called him out now. He has. Like, so basically, the, there's a lot of people going, well, Roman's not going to know any of this and come back. If Roman comes back and he's not been watching any of this, then he's an idiot, right? So yeah. like, it makes yeah. Roman look stupid. So Roman knows what's happening. Roman can't come back and be like, oh, what? Like Roman, Roman's got to come back and be fully aware. Fully so aware he's got, he's got, you know, he's got the Usos and then he's going to need one more person. So it's like, how are we going to do it? But I think it's, it's got to grow yet. I think it's really got to grow. We've got mm, so many more names we do. that can be added to the bloodline. We do. Uh, but moving across to the other side of the fence, we had a huge street fight. Yes, going from one Samoan Joe Samoa. in Roman Reigns to Samoa Joe in yeah. Samoa Joe. We've got uh, a match set for AEW Dynamite next week. This was announced on Rampage where it will be Samoa Joe taking on Chris Jericho in a stampede in street fight. Now, this, of course, is off the back of their current rivalry between the Jericho Learning Tree and Samoa Joe Shibata and Hook. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a fun one. It's not for the title, but a street fight. I'm always here for seeing a street fight. And it's Samoa Joe, and he's vowed to break and torture Jericho and said he has faith that he would massacre Jericho and no one will come to save him. I want to watch him drag Jericho out to the car park and just wrap him around a tree. Just wrap him around a tree. Yeah. Until yeah. you just hear every last bone pop. You've been playing too much Mortal Kombat. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm, also, I'm also very aware that I'm going to have to listen to Fozzy live again. You when, will have to listen London. to Fozzy live at, at Wembley, but this time it'll be their new song. <laughs> it's the Learning Tree song. No, but, and then they'll do Judas anyway. Just because, yeah, you know, yeah. people love it. People yeah. love Judas. Uh, speaking hottest, of people... Hottest single of the summer for the last five oh, million years. It is the sound of the summer. Uh, staying with AEW just now, though, Roosh has joined the Don Callis family, or it looks like he has, on Rampage last night. Uh, in a backstage segment, Roosh was met by Don Callis, who I sort of had said that he wants to see what this, the former Ring of Honor world champion can do, what he what potential he has in AEW. Obviously, Don Callis looking to fill up the ranks of the Don Callis family yeah. after AEW International Champion Will Ospreay left the group this past week on Dynamite. And I think Roosh is quite a decent addition. My only thing with that is Roosh just seems to be moved from faction to faction to faction at the moment. Yeah. And there has been some direction with him, that stuff with MJF, but it looks like it's just sort of, right, we've not got much for you. We'll put you with Don Callis. But it's like Roosh is a master of factional wrestling obviously yep. he's come from a factional background in wrestling mm -hmm. before he came to AEW but it does feel like it's just like oh you're the faction guy so it, it's like no it's like if we're going to put yeah. Callus with him we know Roosh can be an absolute beast we know he can be an absolute monster we know Callus can get the best out of that kind of performer yeah. we know that Callus can really complement that caliber he can get of performer heat that maybe he's and, lacking and that's it right he can he can round out the rest of the heat that needs yeah. to be got there while Roosh just has to focus on absolutely obliterating people so maybe if this can form off into a bit more of a personalized thing yeah their relationship rather than it just being a wider kind of i'm managing the whole thing and you're just coming along for the ride then i'm up for it because i think yeah. callus as well would make a great mouthpiece uh just just generally i think complimenting what everything roosh, roosh is going to be doing in ring so it'll definitely be good fun to see looking forward to that one in the future we got some news though surrounding uh, john moxley's iwgp title run though this one coming from the wrestling observer uh, now the title change was apparently a deal worked out by tony khan and new japan to have the title title changes in the US, and this allows Moxley to become the first man in history to hold the AEW, IWGP, and WWE World titles. Naito is obviously still the most popular wrestler in Japan, the report says, but even though he's well past his prime physically, yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. bit of a statement there. <laughs> there. Uh, but New Japan is torn between having to have the world champion drawn now uh, and creating stars for the future. Yes, yeah, so, so it, like having this deal between the two companies, it makes complete sense yeah. having that John Moxley type, in fact, having just John Moxley Moxley come in and take that belt. Yeah put a little bit more excitement into that picture when they're trying to, as it says there, either draw from the past and having having big names or trying to establish those it stars in the future. It does also leave New Japan without a title, though. 
And that's that's the one thing that it, it's kind of there's, if there's no title in Japan, like if yeah. Box they can't make every show, then it, yeah. it does feel like a bit of a weird one. It's a cool like, and obviously he's he's a big draw, and everybody mm-hmm. loves seeing Moxley, especially his work in Japan has been phenomenal. But I feel like you can't do it too much. I think yeah. you can't really move that belt too much around. It, Japan needs to have the belt there. Which is it's great to see that the, the deal was for him to win it in Chicago in the US. You get that win yeah. and then have him drop it at Forbidden Door, of course, yeah. back to Naito again in the US. It feels like it was a nice was, closed chapter and Moxley can come back and do whatever he's been doing in AEW. Yeah, I was thinking that as well, like it would have been nice if we'd really dragged it out. We, we started to see a lot of the heel talent uh, in New Japan really, yeah. really going off about like how dare this American yeah, take yeah, there's quite a few, of the, the, a few of those takes, and it was like, why, why, why didn't we just capitalize on that and mm. really just, just make a giant factional warfare? Tony loves factions. So does New Japan. To be oh, fair, man. they love their factions out <laughs> in New Japan pro wrestling. I'll tell you that. We're going to round things off though with uh, some news surrounding, obviously, the, the the most recent Shane McMahon rumors. We had uh, was it yesterday? Mercedes Monet a couple of days ago came out uh, just saying like, oh yeah, I just sort of bumped into him at the airport. We locked eyes. It was like, oh my god, yeah. it's you. Uh, and like they swapped phone numbers getting stuff and caught up uh, but speaking on his podcast the extreme life of matt hardy you'll never guess who it was speaking on his podcast <sighs> maybe matt hardy yeah it was matt oh, wow, hardy okay, okay. Uh, he's asked if he could see a world where shane mcmahon would actually join AEW, and he said he's not i heard from someone none of that's true it's matt fiction 100 percent. yeah it would be wild uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah shane reached out to someone i said like what's all this talk about me in AEW?" Uh, he said, what's all this talk about me and AEW? Why is this going on? Uh, people then started texting Matt about it, apparently, and reached out to someone and asked them about it, uh, which, which is kind of interesting. So it looks but like it, it's, it's, it's of... a big game of whispers that has, uh, has happened yeah. where he has maybe reached out to someone. Like, that seems like that is the, the, the information that is factual, is he has reached out to someone just in terms of speaking, just a message uh, I don't not, even think it's that. Not even to look into joining the company and it's just snowballed that, from it. there. Yeah. He's maybe messaged someone at the company and it has snowballed. Yeah. Um, but it, Matt Hardy speaking there, he obviously he has had insight into the inner workings of, of AW course, for yeah, some yeah. time and he knows Shane McMahon. He's known him for 30 odd years at yeah. this point. So if he's saying it's a bit wild and crazy, it's probably a little bit more unlikely but this is the wacky world of professional Anything wrestling. Anything can happen in the AEW. Yeah. I mean, it's truly the Forbidden Door. They had it last week. Yeah. Shane McMahon there. I, I wouldn't ever write he it got out. Stu- his shoelaces got stuck in a corridor backstage yeah. and he just couldn't. Couldn't make it to the ring. Fell ring. over, started sweating yeah. and that was yeah. it. Couldn't yeah. get back up. He's so sweaty. Just slipping and sliding so all over the place. Uh, but we got, of course, coverage for Money in the Bank tonight here on uh, Live Reactions. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash cultaholic forward slash live. Tomorrow we have all of the uh, well we're going to have all of the content coming out the back of Money in the mm-hmm. Bank but also Ross doing live reactions to NXT Heatwave which is I believe about 11 o'clock he's going to be roughly live that. that time yeah uh, but yeah you just uh, make sure once again tomorrow it'll be youtube.com forward slash cultaholic forward slash live and also at 6 o'clock tonight Oh yes, you can join me on twitch.tv forward slash cultaholic where I'll be exploring the wonders of the solar system. We're going to go spelunking into the, are, the great we're, unknown. We're going into the great unknown. with. Uh, <laughs> we've got a couple documentaries to watch uh, on behalf of the Professor Brian Cox. Lovely. So I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. Very excited. So join me at 6pm twitch.tv forward slash cultaholic and then youtube.com forward slash cultaholic forward slash live. And Later then just on. keep it through because everything's going to be oh. coming through after the show and everything oh, yeah. as well. Don't fall off the chair. Don't fall off the chair. Tighty bye. See you later.